Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Tim from Artillery Fishing and in response to one of my latest videos, I'm gonna go over what the heck is a Whopper Plopper. Yeah, so apparently in my last video, I used the term Whopper Plopper like 50 times on the Whopper Plopper. Whopper Plopper, Whopper Plopper, Whopper Plopper. A Whopper Plopper, Whopper Plopper. A Whopper Plopper, Whopper Plopper. Come on, Mr. Whopper Plopper. Whopper Plop. These Whopper Plopper on the Whopper Plopper. Taking this Whopper Plopper, Whopper Plopper, Whopper Plopper action. Hmm. Get some. And I had a lot of people commenting on my Facebook asking, what the heck is a freaking Whopper Plopper? So pretty much in this video, I'm gonna break it down and explain to you what a Whopper Plopper is, at least in my opinion. All right, for those of you who don't know, maybe new to fishing or not new to fishing, you're really old to fishing, you don't keep up with some of the newer trends, this right here is a Whopper Plopper. Specifically, this size is a 110. They usually come in 90, 110, and 130 sizes. Obviously, the bigger the number, the bigger the lure. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. <laughs> First, let's give a little bit of history of this Whopper Plopper, all right? It was about 2016 when Chris Lane was starting to make big news out on Toledo Bend, a lake that's not too far away from me, where he almost won that big old Bassmaster Classic up there using that Whopper Plopper, just getting explosive bites, going crazy. It's been out for a little while before that, but he was the one that I like to give credit to, and I think a lot of other people do, that made that famous. Kevin Van Dam uh, ultimately went on to win that, but Chris Lane was the one who, who got a lot of attention wondering like, what the heck kind of lure is this? I guess you could say the first original Whopper Plopper was created around 1918. It was called the Mud Puppy, all right? It was made by a company called C.C. Rogers Company, and the first measurements of it were Kind of crazy, they're anywhere between like five to seven inches. So the guy who invented it, Charles Roberts, he eventually ended up going on, he got a patent for it, but those patents only last for, you know, so many years, and that's when all the companies got a hold of it and started mass producing that bad boy. After that tournament though in 2016, that's when the Whopper Popper, like I was saying, got really, really popular. And what's so unique about this type of lure right here is one it comes in all different shapes sizes colors but the main thing that is a constant on this piece is this tail all right this tail spins around and when it's on the water it makes literally like this plopping noise which is why i believe they call it the whopper flopper it's like blah, 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 blah. You just chuck it out there as far as you can and you reel it straight back in. And this is why this is one of my favorite lures to take fishing with me when I don't feel like thinking and I just want to try to catch some fish without having to use my brain too much. I just throw this sucker out there because there is no, you know, you can get crazy with the retrieves if you want, but ultimately at the end of the day, you're going to be fine if you just throw a simple chuck it out there and reel it straight back into you. You're gonna get blown up, you're gonna get hits, and chances are you're gonna hook that fish because one, you got some big old treble hooks right here on the back and on the front. I, oh man, I, can, I really have not lost a lot of fish that have blown up on this thing and it's hard for them to miss it too. And not to say that you will get some misses every now and again if you throw it enough, but most of the time they are staying attached to this freaking lure. The River to Sea Company is the one I think makes the best version of this and they're pretty much known as the king of the Whopper Ploppers. Like I said before, there's other versions. You can get them from other companies, whatever the case may be, all different shapes, sizes, whatever. Let's talk about the specs and how I would actually throw this. There's a couple different ways when it comes to throwing this wapa plapa. Number one, it's all depending on where you're throwing it at. So if I'm throwing it in more of an open water scenario, I got really light grass maybe popping up at the most, but for the most part, you know, an open water scenario, I'm gonna go ahead and put on some heavy monofilament, keep this baby, you know, up in the air. I'm just gonna drag along. It's one of the rare times that I'll actually use mono. Uh, another time, or another type of line that I'll throw it on is some heavy braid. And that's because most of the time, when I am throwing this sucker, I'm throwing it around pieces, down pieces of branch, thick grass that's not at the surface yet, but just barely hanging below, you know? Some type of structure. I'm throwing it around there because the fish usually are sitting there chilling, and most of my strikes have come from when I've actually targeted something like that as opposed to just blindly casting out in the middle of nowhere and reeling it back in. Now, as I said before, this is a great tool to use to fish with, especially if you're a new fisherman, because there are no crazy strategies. You just reel it right back. You can get fancy with it if you want to, you know, where you 
you drag it, make a little pause, reel it in some more, make another little pause, get by some cover, make a pause. The, the list goes on and on and on. I'm sure there's 10,000 videos on YouTube on how people say they throw this sucker, but at the same time, just know that a simple cast and retrieve is gonna catch you fish on this. You don't gotta do all the craziness, although sometimes changing it up does help. We already talked about the line, and me personally, when I do use the braided line, I'm using 50 pound braid on the rod that I like to throw it on. This one specifically is a Abu Garcia Vengeance rod, okay? It's a seven foot six heavy action rod, and one of the reasons why I like to use a heavy action rod as opposed to anything else is simply just because of where I throw this, all right? Uh, because I'm throwing it around cover over just barely below the surface grass and all those kind of covers and places for that fish hide in, I'm gonna throw it on this heavy rod because I need some power if that fish blows up on it and tries to take it down. And that goes to the next important thing the hook set. So as I said, you got these big old friggin' treble hooks on this thing. It's gonna be hard for a fish to run up and grab this and not miss. At the same time though, as you're pulling through the water, and especially if you're using braid, it's gonna be a pretty violent motion on the fish's mouth. So at the same time, remember that fish, as he's biting it, it could be ripping his mouth apart and uh, you know, it'll eventually fall out. I had had that happen a couple times or a few times where I pulled up in and that hook was just barely hanging on to his lip and it ripped open a nice, you know, decent sized hole in his mouth. So just be aware of that when you're using this. Uh, a lot of times what I like to do, as soon as I see it hit and pause, I'll just jerk up, all right? Just like you would not set a normal hook. I'll go ahead and jerk up, try to plant that thing in the roof of his mouth so that way I know, all right, it's a good hook set. He's not caught somewhere in the side or something that's gonna rip open very easily. So that way I can ensure I catch my fish. The reel that I like to use, honestly, I doesn't really matter to me. A lot of people will talk to you about, oh, you want a slower reel, you want a faster reel. I throw it on a bait caster. I got the Abu Garcia Silver Max on here. Cheap reel, cheap reel. If you know anything about me, I don't really go all crazy on my reels. Maybe once I start making some decent money, I will. But as of right now, I, I don't got the money to spend crazy on reels. You know, I barely have enough to spend for okay rods. So I'm not going crazy on reels. And honestly, the way I retrieve it is all gonna be different depending on that day. I'll start off usually with a slower retrieve. If I'm not getting any reactions, then I'll move it up to a faster retrieve. And if I'm not getting any reactions, on that maybe then while well, i go to some crazy you know reel it in pause reel it in get to some cover pause or something you know different than that sometimes it might just not flat out be working for you the times that i hit the most with this whopper plopper is between right when the sun first comes up and probably about mm, until the water or until the outside air temperature reaches about uh, depending on your area for me down here in louisiana and when it hits about 85 i know it's done the fish aren't going to be biting on it too too much anymore you still might get that random bite every now and again i mean i've had them hit it noon before but those are very rare so i hope this little video helped you out and how to throw this whopper plopper just remember a couple basic details on it if you're throwing around cover throw some braid on it. If you're throwing open water, you could put some heavy mono on it. There are three sizes, like I said. It comes in 110, 90, and 130. I don't know why, I just kinda immediately started off with a 110, probably because it was sitting right in front of me. The color-wise, what makes the color the big difference maker is what are the bait fish looking like in your lake. So I fish a lot on Toledo Bend, and Toledo Bend has a lot of shad. That's why I went with kind of a clear, more shad-ish type color here. If you're fishing at nighttime, maybe go with a black. I don't know, it all depends on your lake, what the bait fish look like, and what type of fish are skimming along the top, you know, when they're chasing, getting chased away by predators. Because that's ultimately what you're doing with this, this bite, is you're getting that reaction bite. You want that to go right over the fish's head, he sees it, he hears it, hears the bloop, 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 and he goes up and slams it. And I tell you what, it is one of the most fun catches you will ever have when you catch a fish on a whopper plopper because you see that sucker blow up in front of your face and it just gets your blood pumping. All right, I hope this little bit of helpfulness uh, was good for you. I'll try not to mention the word whopper plopper 50,000 times in my next video. Hope y'all have a good one. Artillery fishing, out.